day 104, Fight with Cancer with Amalia Hawks. Today we are going to be, well, I will be talking about Amalia's medicine, um, kind of what she has to take on a daily basis. And again, anybody that's going through this, um, maybe there's some similar pills that you're taking. Uh, we kind of found Amalia's combination of things that work and things that don't. Uh, so I'll be discussing that. Amalia's had a little bit of energy today, so that was good. She tried to do a little too much. She's a little tired right now, but um, the last couple of days, I think, have been pretty good, right, Ben? A little bit. Uh, and I do, I will take a still picture from her coat chair, and I will try to post that up on the Facebook for everybody because we've got a few comments regarding the coat throne. So I will try to find a way to capture that from the video from yesterday, take a still and pop that up to Facebook for everybody. So, uh, again, thank you, everybody, for the prayers. I, I, re I really mean it. I really, I really do mean it. it. It does make a difference in our lives right now. Um, right now, that's the only weapon that I have to help Amalia feel better. It's the only thing I can do other than take care of her every day. So with all you guys' extra help, it really is making a difference. So I do want to say thank you. Um, a little out of it today. Um, I was really exhausted. I was supposed to go to the men's breakfast this morning, um, and I, I was just physically worn out from the last week, and I think I woke up at about 12 this afternoon. So a little bit of a lazy bone today, but I'm recovering, and uh, I'm hanging in there, and we'll see how tomorrow goes, and I'm really looking forward to going to church tomorrow and my first Bible study on Monday. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That'll be fun. So I will see you guys all tomorrow. Hey, I'm babe. All right, so the number one most important one that she takes would be your oxycodone, and this is a uh, five milligram, and it is a uh, it's a pain reliever. So that's that's one of the more important ones that she takes. That's why we put it up here in the front. The next big important one is promethazine. And that's for her nausea. After she gets her chemo, she tends to get nauseous. And also a combination of if she takes the morphine, which are here in the back. This is a morphine 60, a morphine 30. We try to stay away from this one, and I'm going to have to take this one out of the mix so she doesn't accidentally take it. This is what happened last time. She accidentally took this one, and it was no good. Morphine 30, if her pain gets to a 7 or an 8, sometimes she'll ask for one, but she only asks for one at nighttime. Oxycodone, though, is her, is her standard. That's the one that she's taken pretty much. The new one that they got her on is diazepam, and that is, it's like, a, it's the generic version of Valium. So they gave her Valium, and that's to be in conjunction with the pain pills. Uh, because she takes so many pain medicines, now she's getting thrush in her mouth. She said chemo. And, oh, because of the chemo as well. So they have to give her this to combat the thrush. Lorazepam, this is lorazepam, you guys can't see it, I know. This is lorazepam, she gets this when she gets anxiety. She has to do that after her treatments because they have her on morphine and that helps her get off her effects of the morphine. Pretty good, right? It helps your anxiety from the morphine withdrawal, so that's a good one. Um, so these are general pain medication, muscle relaxation, not including the Motrin, it's the ibuprofen, 600 milligram. Um, and then, see, actually, believe it or not, standard Aleve works pretty well whenever she gets headaches. Um, we don't necessarily have to always take an oxycodone or a morphine. She'll just jump in and grab an Aleve. So these are her pretty much almost daily. Um, another one daily that we do, this was given to us by our landlady here is a Trader Joe's organic hemp protein powder. She said it's about $10 for the container. We've had it for, what, a couple of weeks? A few weeks, and we still have a bit of it left in here. Um, a banana, a couple cups of milk, a couple, tables, or a couple teaspoons of Splenda, and a couple of scoops of the protein powder. And it actually gives Amalia really good energy, really good energy for the day, or at least half a day, right? Okay. So because of the, most of the medication that she gets, there's some other things that she has to take. Um, I don't know how, I guess when you get backed up, when the plumbing's not working too well, I know that's embarrassing, but it's important. They prescribed for her in the beginning Dolcolac. That one didn't really work too well. Um, so they gave her over-the-counter Senna, and that's the one that seems to work, right? That's, and then 
This other one, Senokot, that didn't work so well either, did it? No, so we're going to we're gonna get rid of that one. We're going to get rid of the Dokalak. Those don't really work too well. And then also daily vitamin C. She's supposed to be taking those, which we got to start getting back into the routine of taking those again. And then when she gets an infection in her liver like she first got in, they have her on uh, sulfameth and fluke. Uh, fluconazole or something, fluconazole, ozo, la, 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 la. So those are for, those are for her infections. So those we don't have to take on a daily basis. Um, the ibuprofen only if she has swelling in her liver or if her sides hurt. Um, a good combination for Amalia to take usually, um, is the oxycodone, uh, followed by a diazepam. If she's in a pain level of, would you say six or seven? Those are the first two that we try. If that doesn't work and it's nighttime, then we give you a morphine 30 if we have to. Um, those seem to work really well, but usually when we, when we do the oxycodone and the diazepam, if those, if these two don't work, we jump in with the morphine. So we have to give her the morphine. And then once we give her the morphine, we have to give her a nausea medication. And then once we give her the morphine and the nausea medication, then we have to throw this one into the mix as well. So if her pain is about a 7 or 8, that's what she takes. Um, normally, though, um, she's been doing good with just this one. And sometimes the diazepam has been helping. And I guess that relieves the, the pressure around your liver so you're not hurting so bad, right? Right. So... That's a five minute speech just on your medication. I know it's a lot of stuff, but um, again, the oxycodone seems to be working really well. So we're going to keep relying on that. But how's the diazepam been? I know that's you've taken it a couple times. Has that been working all right? Get you really relaxed so your pain kind of, your muscles aren't so tense. Mm -hmm. So that's a good one. So there's a couple we're going to get rid of. Oh, we got to get rid of the... Oh, that's 30. The morphine 60, we're going to set those aside for extreme emergencies only. So that's uh, that's Amalia's daily regimen. That's kind of what she goes through. And I know sometimes that's why you say you get worn out. Like every time I'm giving you a pill or a cocktail of pills, you get frustrated because it's one pill after the other after the other. Good combination for Amalia to go to sleep. Oxycodone, diazepam, um... The lorazepam will also help her. One of those helps her go to sleep if she's in pain. We'll take out the diazepam and just do an oxycodone and a lorazepam. So it's a couple combinations of things here and there, but we kind of finally figured out the combination of stuff that works. We know what not to do. <laughs> and we have, we, know, we have to know the spacing as well because you can only take the oxycodone once every six hours, the morphine once every 12 hours, so right now we're we're all concerned with pain management, right? And how's your pain been lately? Because I know that's that's been our biggest issue right now is the pain. Well, I've been doing more, so the last two days you did a lot. Uh, today you made breakfast for me. I woke up not feeling too hot, extremely exhausted. I missed the men's breakfast. Um, it was extremely cranky. Um, so you made me breakfast, and then I think I woke up again around what twelve. After I went to sleep, and I just, I think my body was exhausted. And then you made dinner, and you helped clean up the living room a little bit. You washed uh, some stuff. So you're getting a little more energy back, but you're still in pain. Man. Yeah. Anything else? Are you frustrated today? Not right now. Not right now? <laughs> you and your nuts. You're like, oh, he's eating nuts now. Oh, and that's also another big thing that you think helps you, right? Well, that's the good stuff for me to eat. So the doctor told her to get a lot of protein, and she's been eating a lot of nuts, a lot of uh, pistachio nuts. And what did you grow? What do you have right now? Mixed nuts. <laughs> You go into and every time I see you, you're like a little chipmunk. You're just like constantly eating nuts. <laughs> little chipmunk. No? Not so funny? No. No, not so much. All right. I'm going to call it a day and get you to bed. So we can go to church tomorrow. All right, my love.